We in it, we here, we out here, we're in it to win it, we out here crushing. Uh, hi, welcome back to the Emo Social Club podcast. I am Brian. And I am Lizzie. If you're watching this on YouTube, I put neat little like name cards at the bottom there so you can tell who we are and what our name is. And you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram. You mean it's called a lower third? My guy. It's like a middle third. It's not even a third. I understand. Yes, it would be a lower third, but I'm not introducing a special guest. I'm just showing off the hosts. And her name is on there. This is how they do it on Twitch. This is how they do it on the I'm internet. I'm going on how we do it in multimedia reporting, but okay, go off. We are not, we are not a professional news outlet. We are doing our best with our equipment we have. We just talked really before we started recording about how Lizzie needs to rent out uh, some good recording equipment. So don't come at me with this nonsense. I can come at you with a lot of nonsense, my guy. That should, we should change the name of the podcast to I Can Come At You With A Lot Of Nonsense. And this is literal <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> this is nonsense. Uh, welcome back. We have uh, an action-packed episode today uh where we're gonna just hit a couple of news things and also uh give some updates to uh things we talked about on previous episodes of the podcast there's been some developments and not all of them are great (laughs) yeah no but uh we'll talk about that uh but first uh i will be uh djing emo night la again in Chicago uh, on April 5th, a week from uh, when this podcast is released. Uh, So come to Subterranean and enjoy that. Last time it sold out, so if you haven't gotten tickets, you're going to want to get them sooner than later because I know that it's 17 and up, but it's all bangers all the time, and it's a good, enjoyable evening for you and your friends. Uh, And also, like... You know, these emo events being all 21 and up, like a lot of people want to go, but they're not 21 yet. They're like 20. And it's like, you know, just just deal with it or or just go to the other ones. There's enough emo events in the city of Chicago that you can go enjoy a bunch of there, them. There is there is the, uh, the used happy hour for beauty bar emo versus pop yeah. night anyway before then. So if you that really, right really want to have a 21 plus event yeah. before you go to a 17 plus event you can go to that one yeah and i will be going to that beforehand because me too me my guy pictures. hell yeah i need me some pictures um yes and uh as you haven't noticed because nobody really gives a shit um i have taken a couple weeks off of the twitch stramen um i have not been on twitch just mainly i've been sick as you probably heard from my nasal voice in the last episode. And I just had a lot going on in my evenings after work. So uh, haven't been able to, but plan to restart those and finishing Kingdom Hearts 3, which is just, oh man, having a having a good time with that. It's just flashing lights and loud noises. And Donald Duck is the most annoying character I've ever met in my life. Wow. That's oh my God, thing. though. Is it? Is it? Like, when you're a kid, sure, he's got a funny voice. Like, my dad uh, would imitate the name of his voice. Yeah, everyone does a Donald Duck voice. He does it now, and I'm like, Dad, that it's so irritating. And, like, but but now, like, you're in, uh, you're on an adventure, right? So, like, pretend you're out there, you're in the world, enemies just coming at you from all sides, shooting fireballs at you, and you're trying to dodge, and you got this asshole duck (laughs) just fucking squawking at you like and you're like i just want you to tell me pertinent information (laughs) because what you're doing right now is just screaming at me in the most irritating voice i've ever heard and i am an adult man and i don't have to stand for this and there's just flashing lights and colors and fireworks and giant creatures 
it's wild and I'm uh, it's fine. But okay. I yeah, I've gone back to like the previous Kingdom Hearts and I'm like this is a bit better, but uh yeah, I'll get through it and I'll get on to some other stuff. All the Final Fantasies are coming to Switch. I might just jump onto those because that sounds like more fun. Um there's another game that's coming out. I'll figure it out. But yeah, Twitch streams coming back at you. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, wow, follow on Twitch. Email well. Social Club on the Twitch. That's also in the name plate on the thing. So hit, you know, hit hit that like button. Hit it button. somewhere. Hit it. <laughs> Smash that button. Um, Lizzie, what's going on in your life? Oh, man. I've just been uh, working a bunch, so not too much on my end. I will be at um, Emo Night, um, Emo vs. Pop Punk at the very least, for the U's on April 5th. So come and say hey. Don't be weird. We ran into, Brian and I ran into some really nice fans when we went oh, to yeah. Emo Night on Sunday night. What's up, Elena? <laughs> so, and Adam. <laughs> we'll, we'll put their, uh, we'll tag them below and you can go check them out they're very very nice people thank you so yeah. much for listening and actually being fans i'm really shocked still <laughs> it's trying to get over it it is I, I i love you guys thank you for listening but it is still like a shock that anybody has yeah, like any value. interest in what the hell we do listenership everybody like truly cannot believe you listen to us yeah again super independent and super figuring it out and developing ourselves our resume is here by doing this stuff. So it is a wild fact that, you know, people are paying attention, but thank you because I do think we talk about some cool stuff and, uh, I, ho- I hope you enjoy yeah. everything we do. And thanks Otherwise, for the beverages the other night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Otherwise I don't have too much going on my end. If you're, uh, around to Paul starting, uh, next week <laughs> when the strength room starts, say, Hey, but don't be weird about it. Watch me cry as I take a TV class because I hate being in front of a camera and speaking from a teleprompter. It is my absolute oh my bane God. of my existence next to Apple products. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. I feel like that was an offensive statement to be made. Uh, it's a spicy take. That's what it's, it is. Uh, that's, what the, that's what the fans come here for, right? Exactly. Uh, uh, so- find me on Twitter. Let's talk about yeah. us because it's the uh, third movie, new movie I had seen this year. <laughs> and last year I saw four new movies. So we're doing really well. Oh also, <laughs> let's talk about Avengers Endgame because I am so stoked. I'm a huge That's Marvel a- fan and I don't care. So I'm, I'm not a big Avengers. I like Guardians. I don't like Avengers. All right. Moving on to our next topic. <laughs> great we don't have time for this (laughs) Um, so a quick couple updates uh number one we did an episode about article 13 uh which was a bill that was proposed in the eu uh so it would be a law that quick summary quick you know maybe i'm not even getting it all right but quick summary of what quick recap um Basically, the the idea behind Article 13 was to help copyright holders prevent uh, social networks from being allowed to up uh, to upload like uh, copyrighted material. So, for example, if somebody uploads a YouTube video that's a cover version of a song uh, in the EU it could be that that video would be the responsibility of YouTube to take down. So it's changing the ownership of who is uploading copyrighted material from the user to the company that uh, has that user as a customer. Uh, This is a change from like what we do because it would change some amount of like parody uh, parody laws and and that kind of thing that would give you fair use of, uh, of, a song or fair use of a topic or movie clip or video clip to use in your own video and your own media, uh, allowing you to basically like comment on it and, and add your own take on something. Uh, this is something that a lot of copyright holders wanted to pass because it just helps them prevent loss of revenue from their, uh, ownership of music or ownership of movies or video. Uh, and a lot of internet creators are, 
concern because it means that, you know, obviously if this, well, let's just get the cat out of the bag. It passed. Uh, they actually changed it from article 13 to article 17 because sure. Great. Um, yeah, let's just change the name so that people are, uh, confused and we'll get to that in a second. Um, but a lot of creators in the EU are concerned because this means that, you know, people might be uploading things and these sites might say, well, we don't know if there's any copyright copyrighted material in this. So we might just prevent people uh, from uploading. That could be one thing. So like they has to, they have to go through like another test to be sure there's no copyrighted material in it. If somebody is on the gaming side of things and they stream a game, is that, uh, is that breaking copyright law because the game's owner doesn't want it to be streamed? Um, if somebody, you know, comments on a song, comments on a new video, comments on somebody else's video, like, oh, the Avengers trailer just dropped. Let's comment on it. Well, now you can't show that video in the video because it's it's copyrighted. So they're just going to take it down before you could claim the video. You could claim the copyrighted material, make money off of it. Now it's just like you got to take it down completely. So content creators in Europe, obviously concerned. There's also some concern from Americans because these websites just kind of have one basic rule set. They operate in the US, they operate in the EU, they use the same rule set, they don't care. Uh, they could say that a creator needs to uh, like block their video in the EU. So like, oh, this contains copyrighted material, we're not gonna show it in the EU. So now European creators aren't, or, or European viewers can't see videos that are released outside of the EU because they might contain copyrighted material. So a lot of concern is here. What's real uh, fucking fun about this is the fact that 10 uh, uh, parliamentary votes, the, the, the people who voted, I don't know what it's called in the EU, and I'm not going to learn. So they, <laughs> uh, they basically said, we were confused by the wording of it. We're confused with our votes. We would like to change them. And so these 10 people like said what they actually meant to vote for. And the finding from that is that it actually changed the outcome of it, but they're not allowed to revote. They're not allowed to change their votes. It's oh gone God. through. So, uh, in the, in the, 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 mind blowing off chance that there is anybody listening to this in the EU get involved, get, learn more about it. Article 13 slash article 17, learn more about these, these issues that are happening and get involved in it. Uh, if you're American and you, you have any friends in the EU, you know, tell them to be concerned, but obviously just be on the lookout for this. Uh, a lot of people signed uh, petitions against it from all over the place because it could affect more than just the EU. So to stay vigilant and uh, be concerned about copyright materials. Uh, I generally think that it's, it's corporations over people. It's money over, uh, you know, independent people, DIY people that are just trying to do their own thing and make money on their own. And it's people who are trying to get all the money they can out of their one thing. They're like, eh, I don't want anybody I don't want anyone talking about this song. <laughs> I don't want anyone showing this trailer. So that's uh, that's an update on that, and it's <laughs> great. Um, another update is about our most entertaining and our longest episode <laughs> about oh the Chicago elections, <laughs> which I'm sure everyone uh, listened the whole way through and just had a great time. Just yeah, you know, they, they themselves went on the NPR checklist. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. I can't believe that you guys would, uh, you know, be so involved. Like, you're so great. Thank We're you. So proud. All of our, thank you, all of our Chicago listeners for doing that and going out and voting for one you of, know. I assume, every Chicagoan. <laughs> I'm pretty yeah. sure uh, three million people were on the ballot and you could vote for any <laughs> of them. You're not allowed to vote for yourself, though, so. Yeah, that's true. Just, that's just, just know that you have until um, Tuesday at like what seven o'clock to vote for the Chicago elections for yeah new mayor and yeah, for so everybody now, else. 
there was a runoff, and there's two uh, two candidates for mayor, <coughs> uh, Lori Lightfoot and Tori Preck- Preckwinkle. Uh, there's also two candidates for treasurer, uh, and we'll get to that in a second. But there's obviously a lot of controversy over mayorship because we're Chicago and nobody can win ever. Nobody can yeah, be happy. Yeah, because everyone ever. is inherently corrupt in one way or another, and you just have to pick the lesser of two evils. It 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 is awful that we are stuck with the lesser of two evils. Like the narrative after the election was that we have two uh, progressive women of color, uh, one who is LGBTQ, uh, who are in the running for mayor, which is the first time that has happened in Chicago history. And it's like, that's amazing. And then we're like, yeah, but one's in the pocket of the cops and one's in the pocket of the, you know, the Chicago elite and the, the uh, Madigan who, you know, that's something that everybody says. And I'm like, yeah. I don't, I don't even know that because I'm, I'm too young for that. <laughs> so like Madigan or like more recently Burke. Yeah. 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 Oh, Burke is the, so that's, yeah. that's like the most recent. Yeah. So uh, nobody wins. No, you're, you're picking the lesser two evils. You're either for the cops or you're for, uh, uh, yeah, the old, old way of, thinking old way of being it's just more probably more rom emmanuel <laughs> so i don't know i i uh i'll include a link in the show notes of this for anybody who's looking to to get an idea of it um as it stands now according to most polling it looks like Lori lightfoot is way ahead in the polls like way way yeah ahead. That, that's the most um accurate projection But we still have to realize she is still pretty actively for the police academy, Mm -hmm. which if you remember from our Black Lives Matter talk with Ariel, that it would basically be placed in an area that already has too many police officers in an area that is more economically not so well off. So it's just going to increase more issues. And as we've seen in the past 10 years, having more cops doesn't really do that much. No, and... I'd say that we are fairly, uh, I don't know. I hate to make a stand on anything because I am very open-minded to most things, but I do think that we are not solving the issues by having more police on the street in Chicago. I think that we need to dedicate the money to uh, building up neighborhoods and doing more in that way. Um, so in the link, I'm trying to find out some more information about where both candidates stand. And, and obviously if you are, are, you know, undecided, cause there's still a lot of people undecided. Um, there's a lot in there that is helpful. Uh, you don't even need to read all of it. Like there's, there's just small amounts of stuff you can read and get kind of an idea of where everybody stands. They are progressive. They are moving for things like $15 minimum wage. Um, there's something else in here. Uh, but that I think that's the main thing is is fifteen dollar minimum wage. Um, <laughs> I'll just make that noise until I find it. But Wow. Uh, well I will say for one thing, there was um a recent debate that between both of them and Print Winkle basically wants to keep developing CPS and different educational institutions. Mm-hmm. where Lightfoot wants to take the original head who's been kind of doing this and working with Frank Winkle this entire time, take her out of that position. Mm-hmm. Which, because Prent Winkle has such a history of doing this and like building up, um, you know, neighborhoods and different institutions, which is what everyone would rather have. Mm-hmm. But because she has all the, you know, all the connections to these really bad people, yeah people don't you know if you it's like one one bad one spoils the bunch is essentially what it is but she seems to have the most forward thinking and the least likelihood of having more negative outcomes for those in like poverty stricken areas and those who are minorities Mm -hmm. however i think because there's also been a lot of burying of the fact that lightfoot is for like the cop academy and is really heavily inter- in, entangled with the Chicago BD that she is going to come out on top. Unfortunately, 
just yeah. because of the reason is because people don't want to acknowledge it because they just don't want another Rahm Emanuel. Yeah. And that's pretty much the only reason why. I feel like that would be the same thing as like, you know, say we get to the end of our major elections of 2020 and it came between, you know, one liberal and one Republican and everyone was like, oh, I don't like this or this, but I guess I'm going to go with this one because it's not like the last person. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not that it's not that useful for anybody. It's only useful for those who have the privilege of not having to think about how is the police going to negatively affect my life and livelihood and well-being? Yeah. Um, I will say there's one other thing here that is, is a, a concern that we've talked about before is aldermanic privilege where Lightfoot wants to end it. And uh, Tori Preckwinkle is not so confidently saying, ending it, saying that it, it should be done. She is for banning outside employment for aldermen, uh, but is not ending aldermanic privilege. Uh, Lightfoot is also uh, pushing for term limits on aldermen, which Preckwinkle is not. Uh, and I only mention that because, as we know, uh, aldermen stay in office for a long time. That's how you yeah. get an Ed Burke. And they utilize their, their office to make money and to be lobbied to and... Uh, as I've said to some friends of mine that have joked about running for alderman, uh, you see, it seems like a role that's pretty easily corruptible. <laughs> oh like, yeah. So I, I, I don't know. Again, into, cor into corruption, it's entry level corruption. Yeah. I'd like to do some corruption, please. <laughs> um, so I, I think that, you know, again, lesser of two evils is, are there some good things that Lightfoot is saying? Yes. Are there some bad things that Lightfoot is on the side of yes. Is it the same with Preckwinkle? Yeah. So I don't think we win either way. I do think that, you know, one of the reasons that we keep bringing this up in our podcast is because <clears throat> we, as our generation have become so disillusioned with politics because it's choosing lesser of two evils. So why even get involved? Why even be a part of it? And um, I think that is the reason why it's like kind of the, is it the chicken or the egg? Like if we don't get involved, if we don't do something, if we don't hold people accountable, then why wouldn't the same people just keep running or why wouldn't the status quo just, you know, if, if people are going to benefit from that, then why not just keep running and keep doing the same thing? So, you know, yes, it sucks. Yes. It's not what we want. But we're not going to get what we want if everybody just sits on their ass and doesn't get involved in some way. In that, I do want to give my own uh, uh, endorsement, which is, you know, cool, great. Well, look <laughs> at sa you. The sad boy from a podcast told me to vote for this person. Um, there is also a runoff for the treasurer uh, and uh, Amaya Pawar, who we've talked about in the last time we talked about the elections uh, as part of that runoff, uh, he had the second most votes in the general, uh, but he is definitely more of a progressive candidate. He wants a public bank uh, to support uh, definitely supporting uh, areas where they don't have access to banks or they have uh, predatory banks. Um, so people, you know, banks that are utilizing their fees and, and, and that to, to basically it's kind of like, poor tax like because you're poor you're kept in poverty uh he wants to utilize more of a municipal bank um i i god i forget the name of the <laughs> i forget the name of the person who's running against because i'm just like i, I i've wow. been following i've been following him for a while so i will say that i'm a little biased but also like i can't be biased i'm just some dude like <laughs> well that's, that's the thing so what, what's interesting <laughs> is um so, for example, the Sun Times really early on in the election cycle endorsed Lightfoot, and because of that, when they wanted to try to get a Lightfoot versus Pretwinkle interview going on, Pretwinkle turned it down because there's not going to be fairness to it. Which yeah. there's fairness doctrine that was introduced in the '70s. Um, so all media outlets have to give fair time to each political party that they choose to do. 
So mm-hmm. say one person says, I want this liberal on, you have to legally put on the Republican to have their side as well. Yeah. So be, that being said, obviously they're both very progressive people in some senses, um, but sometimes endorses it. And that's actually really negative view for most like big media outlets like us or small. It won't kill us. Mm-hmm. But if you are a larger traditional media outlet, it's probably not the best bet for you because you're going to lose out on a lot of future uh, tips and other stories that are also equally important. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, this independent podcast is uh independent podcast and I'm just some dumb dude with a voice on it. Um, <laughs> which... Maybe one day we'll be more professional enough to be like, well, I can't say this dumb things anymore. Uh, Melissa Conyers Irvin is the other candidate in the treasurer runoff. Um, I also will link to uh, this interview with the Sun Times uh, that both of them gave. Uh, so you can see them answer the same question to get an idea uh, about why I'm sort of backing this person. But I'll give you two things of just saying that. Um, Pawar believes in a municipal owned public bank. Um, this is one of his biggest things. He's been done a couple videos for like now this, uh, explaining why and explaining, um, the reasons behind it. Uh, it's, uh, it, it would benefit people who are living in poverty is the simple answer. And then you can get into the more complicated answer of why, uh, it doesn't hurt people who have money and it just benefits people who are struggling. Is, is this short reason. I will also add that there is a very simple answer here of have you accepted campaign donations from financial firms that do business with the city? And Pawar said, no, I refuse to accept contributions from any firm engaged in business related to the office of the treasurer. When uh, Conyers Irvin was asked the same question, she said, I have followed all of the laws of campaign finance uh, to the, you know, and I'm like, so that's not a no. Uh, so there you go. I think that, uh, if you're trying to be progressive, you say, I don't take money from anyone with vested interest in what I'm doing. I take money from the people of the city who believe in my agenda and believe what I want to do and put me in this position. So that's, that's, that's my two cents. Yeah. In an ideal world. So that's my two cents. If you believe in these progressive ideas, if you think that there's there's something to be done there, that is my recommendation. And either way, if you live in Chicago, you can go and vote. You can early vote. The voting date is April 2nd, so that is next uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. If you have the opportunity to go and early vote, you can go. Uh, Ballotpedia, which is one of the links below, will give you information about where to vote. What, what you're voting on, which is just those two races, probably. And uh, yeah. yeah, so so just just do it, guys. Just, like, just do it. Just Come honestly, on. just do it. It's not that hard. No, I, I was literally, when I did the, the general election, I was in and out within 15 minutes. It, it, it literally was the fastest thing I could have imagined. Because I've no, only done like uh, a mail-in ballot before. So I was like, oh, well, this will take me a while. But just going in is like 15 minutes and you're out. So for these elections, they are important. You live in the city. It affects what you do, whether you think it does or not. You, you're you going to do something for your neighborhood, for your for your community, for the people who live here with you to just go and like give your own vote and opinion. And, My two a, lot of, and a lot of polling places are open on the weekends. Yeah, yeah. You got all weekend. You got all day today. This podcast comes out in the morning. Hopefully you're listening to it. Download it. And then uh, go to the polls. And then uh, go to the weekend. Let's ask you as you vote. (laughs) No, don't do that. You can do whatever you want to do. Yeah, whatever you want to do. If you vote, if you vote, you know what? Uh, uh, Take an Instagram uh, story. And we'll repost it on our page. If yeah, you, uh, we'll share it. We'll share it on our story. So just make sure to uh, tag us in it. Yeah. Tag my social club. Hashtag. I'm not a dumb fuck. <laughs> <laughs>
No, just tag us and we'll uh, we'll repost your thing. Um, you can I'll do it when I go. Want to do? I don't care yeah. if you hashtag no. I'm a dumb yeah. fuck. That's great. I'm not a dumb fuck. Uh, I I'll do it when I go and do early voting as well. So uh, yeah, if you do it, tag us on Instagram. Yes. So that's our catch up part of the episode. Now time for the mustard. Stop. That silence. It should have been laughter. <laughs> I hate that. I hate that so much. I will say, though, because um, we're recording this on Thursday. So today was, was the Cubs opening game day, but they played in Texas. They didn't play here. <laughs> and I was working today, and our station manager ordered 100 Pertillo's hot dogs. Oh, my god! And fries. And a Pertillo chocolate cake. Oh, and yeah. had a big old party and passed out beer and turned the Cubs game on and started blasting party jams at noon. That's awesome. That I'm into. <laughs> right? It was a very and then he ordered pizza. <laughs> if there's anything that our emo podcast listeners love more than local Chicago politics, it's probably sports. But it's sports definitely ball. Portillos and cake. And pizza. And pizza. We really had beer. everything encompassed in this one conversation that happened to me. Like, I am 100% for real these. It is on my Instagram. This happened. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I like that. Um, uh, so we're going to talk a bit of, of music news, you know, and this music podcast. Ooh, wild. Music and public interest podcast. Um, public policy. Public policy. So this is a story that's just kind of happened over the last couple of days uh, about kind of like music genres and whether or not people fit into the genre, which we, we have talked about before. So uh, maybe this is a little bit of like, you know, I, I always think back to like how you described it as gatekeepers and people who are are, uh, you know, I believe the genre is this. And therefore, like anybody who's not doing it like this is is not part of our genre. And uh, the story has been coming out about this rapper, this Atlanta rapper called Little Nas X, uh, who had a song uh, called One Last Ride. And it made it it's kind of like a country song, like it has like country influences to it. And it made it onto the Billboard Top 100 Country Songs. And people were like freaking out about it. And then uh, Billboard decided to remove it because they didn't feel like it fit the country, uh, country music uh genre enough to stay on like there standard. yeah and i'm sure it's it's a little bit of like uh, uh some just public backlash about it um i saw a couple interesting videos before we started recording um one th- from a music critic anthony fantano on youtube who's awesome i'll link the video that he talked about it down below um i saw a couple different takes on it of just like basically that country music a kind of sucks and is boring and B um, Are we wrong? that they're borrowing a lot from hip hop and pop music. And the idea that like this hip hop song wouldn't then be allowed to, to kind of borrow from your genre. And then, it, you know, it, it's, it's it, it, borrowing. It gets you onto the chart, but you're not allowed to borrow our stuff. We're only allowed to borrow yours to, to chart. I guess there's like not a lot of crossover. It's not like a, a country song is on hip hop radio or hip hop charts, but um, there's been a lot more crossover between like country music and other forms of music. And so it does feel like kind of strange to me that like they said, no, you're not allowed to be on a chart anymore. It's so we were talking about this actually in my office uh, this afternoon and our country radio station actually commented, um, at least our promo people did, and said, hey, I just think if you had that twang in there, it's pretty country. Yeah. And we were listening to it, and yeah, it actually, I hadn't listened to it before this afternoon. And yeah, it sounds like a hip-hop song mixed with country, which if you listen to any modern other pop or hip-hop song or even like emo rap or something like that, it still sounds like whatever original genre it stems from. 
Mm-hmm. But we still classify it as what other, whatever alternative they may be. So yeah. for us to declassify it simply because it has more beats in it, but he still has that twang. Yeah. And the fact that he is literally like, I have a horse. He literally <laughs> says in the game song, I have a horse. Who says that in any other song? This is the we E-Hop. should We should this mention is E-Hop music. That the song itself is more of a meme than a real song. It is made in in a parody. Uh, this is from you know a, a kid who is a is a rapper, is a hip hop artist from Atlanta, but is also a video game player who just really likes Red Dead Redemption, and he made this song out of it. And one of the reasons why it's so popular right now is because it's all over TikTok as a meme with people like I don't know if you've seen the meme, but basically like. They start the song and then as soon as the beat, they like do a jump and as soon as the beat comes in, they land and they're wearing like a full cowboy getup, and they're like pretending like, oh yeah, I'm a cowboy, even though they were like normal in the previous scene. So I think that's why it's starting. It's like, it's really popular as a meme right now, uh, which is why it's all over the place, which is why, you know, Baby Shark is, is so popular, which is why anything why like that Baby is popular. Baby Shark is going to get a Record Store Day vinyl release. Exactly. So... I, 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 I think that's important as part of it because you could say, well, it's just a, it's just a parody. Like it's not like a real country song. And then you're like, but if people are enjoying it and it's in the genre and it's being listened to like this much, then isn't it like this kid is now going to be signed. Like record labels are, are battling it out for who gets to sign this kid because this song blew up. So they're like, all right. There, let's let's go where the action is let's go where the you know let's, i see the smoke right. let's catch the fire well, i will say something that i actually found on rolling stone in their article which is i think the main the main um publication to break the story more so and bring more of other um problems to light with it they state that they actually have a comment here where it says, meanwhile, some pop radio programmers acknowledge that the format is reluctant to play music by black artists, referring to country music. Mm-hmm. Which is still pretty interesting and would possibly contribute to the reason why Billboard suddenly ripped this down. Mm-hmm. Because if we can still play occasionally like Weird Al on air, you know, I'll, I'll bet in, in an appropriate genre setting, obviously, you're not going to put mm-hmm. them on, you know, top 40, <laughs> you know, right now. You'd I probably mean, put them on like an yeah. alternative or like a throwback yeah. station. If he was but top 40, <laughs> then. If it was top 40, that'd be fucking wild. Was it? But the, it is not. He had that you one know, song that got. He could be. Do you want to campaign? Go off. What was um, the one? Uh, White and Nerdy. He was. Pre- that was a pretty big song. Yeah, like, that considering. was. Like that got pretty popular, and I know that was played in some different places. I don't remember what radio stations were playing it now because that was not recent, but non recent. Uh, yeah. Uh, but there's definitely like, I don't know. If it happens where that song gets popular, like, what are you going to do? People want to hear it. I don't know. Right. I think that's where, while obviously they're going to say it's not because of race, I feel like it's also because. They do have these gatekeepers that they want to keep, but I also think that while, yes, you do have to tailor your listening to your audiences, you shouldn't be having to, like, keep doing it at the same time because you also have to know that your type of music reaches to so many other people as well. Like, country music can reach people who are Black or Latino, for example, which... You don't usually think of it because that's not the traditional standard. You usually think it's just like white people who have pickup trucks and like <laughs> and like a farm. And you're like, excuse me, sir. Um, <laughs> but the, I mean, I, that's how we classify it as. But there's much more to it. And I think it's another thing like we've talked about before where emo is typically like a suburban white dude. It's. There's so much more beyond that. And I think that country music has a really difficult problem opening up past that. And I mean, they also have issues even, you know, premiering and hosting female art, country artists on there. Yeah. And that's there's been a big topic of the bay for the last few months as well, trying to get more female artist recognition because they've actually done um, breakdowns of programming logs, mm-hmm. which essentially break down um, music by hour. 
and what's supposed to be played. And when you're in radio, unless you're in like college radio or like your own radio station that you run a stream, you cannot change it. Or you only get selected like say four to four songs and you pick out of those four songs what you want to put in. Rarely do they actually take real requests, by the way. Right. Sorry to kill your vibe. Oh yeah. You're a boob radio person. <laughs> I just want to be real with you as somebody who works in radio. But <laughs> So people analyze these programming logs and they saw that pretty much the only few people who popped up was Carrie Underwood because she's mm -hmm. one of the larger ones and like Dixie Chicks here and there. And the rest were newer artists or if they were um, new artists that were being shopped around and they have to play them because that's how country stars apparently get signed and get more popular is that they go on radio tours, which I didn't Wait. know about till this year. Hold on. Are you saying that that money uh, can get you on tours and on the radio? And that yeah, maybe wild. that's how country music is, is being manufactured and, and marketed? You know, it's it's real wild. And I mean, it also still markets to the like, yeehaw, like booze and drinking. And <laughs> my truck stole my girlfriend and everything. My truck stole my girlfriend. <laughs> I feel is that it? I don't know. I do not listen. It could to be. I don't fucking know. All that my brother does, and that's the gist I get from it. Uh, commenting as well on your 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 question of of race is uh, another song that uh, that uh, Anthony Fantano pulls up in his video is this song called "Accidental Racist," which was uh, a Brad Paisley song. Uh, trying to find a year on here, but it must have been pretty recent. Uh, so this is kind of its own parody song where he does this. It's with LL Cool J and it's basically like this sort of like back and forth about how like somebody from the South would be like an accidental racist and like wasn't aware of it. And then okay. LL Cool J is sort of just like, it's cool. And it's like, oh, this is a terrible song. Uh, this charted on the Billboard Top 100 country songs. Oh my god! So like the idea <laughs> that uh, yeah, it, it peaked at number 77 uh, and number 23. This is from 2013. Uh, oh okay, so, so this was so a while ago. Yeah, this wasn't recent. Um, but yeah, 2013, it charted at number 77 on the Hot 100. That's a Hot 100. So not just the country charts. Hot 100, number 77. Nice. On the U.S. Hot Country Songs, it was number 23. So like, sure. But you've got a song that's basically like, we're pretending, we're, we're poking fun at racism. Cool. And then uh, this song about Red Dead Redemption that like all the kids are really enjoying. You're like, not country enough. It's like, is it because it's not about racism? And I'm laughing because I'm like, is, 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 that, is, that, is there a hint of truth in that? I don't know. I mean, when when you break down, country is the most popular listened to genre nationwide on radio stations. Mm -hmm. Next being pop, very obviously, and They're alternative. Walk probably Walkmans. <laughs> What's <Walk stop. laughs> that? But it, if you go if you go further south, you do start to get a div. So you start to get more country channels. So up here in the north, at least in Chicago, we have like just a basic country station. Nothing crazy. Mm -hmm. It's just. Uh, Brad Paisley, like Carrie Underwood, Cassidy Pope, whomever, whatever. I don't, I don't know Dixie <laughs> Chips. I don't fucking know. Hey Monday, the normal one. Former, the normal former Hey Monday singer like, Cassidy Pope. Taylor Swift. Per, I don't know. Pre-redemption Taylor Swift. I don't know. Listen, something like don't that. Talk, but if you don't talk about, style, like, like say you go to Texas, you will have like up to ten plus different types of country stations for their different umbrella genres that they have. Mm -hmm. So you'll have like old school country, you'll have new wave country, you'll have rock country, mm -hmm. you'll have pop country, you'll mm -hmm. have like the super, super like yeehaw country, like yeah. I'm hanging with my horse while being a cowboy. <laughs> Probably some deal. Jesus country. <laughs> yeah, you'll have Jesus country. I swear to God, I was flipping a shit when I learned this in my radio programming class. <laughs> what does it <laughs> I want to say I took this radio programming class in 2017. Um, so within two years, so it is still relevant. <laughs> and I feel like because there's so much Southern rhetoric still in there, and that's where it's really derived from is that cowboy, like the original, like I am a cowboy. It's like the 1800s, like I'm eating beans out of a tin can. 
yeah. I am a rough and tumble cowboy and I need to fight for my land. And I feel like that <laughs> mindset has still translated over heavily mm-hmm. within the country music genre rhetoric. And we haven't really changed it. Especially, it's so bad to say that it's because the South predominantly has those types of negative viewpoints where they still view the Confederate flag and as like a badge of honor. Mm-hmm. And when they also have, you know, like they're poking fun at racism or they're saying, you know, every, I hate everyone, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. It, it keeps forwarding what they want in their music. And obviously these artists are going to give what they want because they want to get paid. They want to get airplay, yep. which is understandable. However, I think partnered with programming and those who know that if they were to play this type of song or artists who are my, more minority based, or right, you know, even women based, that they're going to get more upset because it's not the original, I'm a strong, burly dude. And yeah. like, I'm taking my land and I'm taking my ground. And this is the old way to be an overly hetero masculine male in today's society and I want to keep it that way and that sounds so awful to say because I know a lot of people who do really thoroughly enjoy country music however we have to acknowledge the deeper you know the deeper part of that where it could derive from Mm -hmm. and if you know if there are even examples and studies done that pop programmers don't you know they don't want to put black artists on there especially for country music as we're seeing now it's something that i feel like we need to be more aware of and acknowledge because it's going to continue and it's another sector of racial division that i don't think a lot of us really think about especially with rap and hip-hop and r&b being such a popular and important genre Mm -hmm. nowadays that i feel like we just don't acknowledge it we just assimilate to it and make the popularity of it just an acceptance that therefore we must overall accept everybody, which we have historically seen in the last, you know, five years that we do not. Yeah. I, I think it really boils down to we can we can steal from you, but you can't steal from us, basically. Literally. Yeah. Uh, it's literally like we're gonna take your land, but you want equal rights after we took it. Sounds fake. Yeah. And and I don't want to jump to everyone who likes country is racist. <laughs> I don't no, want that to be. No, that's definitely not what we're saying. We're, it's, <laughs> we're saying that there is there is something that's deeper seated in it that I feel that there's some people who are like really, really ingrained into that culture and they feel that close connection to the original theme and meaning to it. Because mm-hmm. obviously I have friends who like go off to like Carrie Underwood's before he cheats. I think most people do. I but, don't. And they're obviously not <laughs> racist. Yeah, no. And and uh, I, I've been seeing, I have not listened to Casey Musgraves at all. Uh, but I did become I aware know. because Haley Williams was on stage with her recently. And I mean, it's Haley Williams. I trust what she does and I trust what she loves. She is a Nashville uh, uh, person. So like clearly there's, there's some influence there from country and, and I'm not going to discredit it as a genre. I'm not going to discredit musicians as musicians. Uh, there's another, once you get to this video, uh, you'll get into a bunch of other ones too, which are pretty interesting about country music now and how it's boring and some other like kind of think pieces. And, you know, it's just people talking about music on the internet, which, Cool. Do do your thing, um, but you kind of get into this 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 hole with it, and this other guy is talking about how boring everything is and how there's no women in it and all this. So I don't know. I I uh, I lost my trail there, but uh, I lost my trail. Oh no! Do you have um, your horse with you? Uh, I, I and I I think that uh, I think a little bit of it is just like what country used to be, what country is now, and maybe people who like the old country aren't happy with the new country music it's stealing too much from pop but there's money in it but they want the old stuff that there's no money in you know uh people who have violins and and uh and fiddles and mandolins and they're playing instruments that are traditionally associated with that that music but now like people are just sort of oh we want this like hip-hop drum in the background of it and we're going to sing about drinking and getting our truck drunk and our dogs drunk and my girlfriend left me from a truck dog and 
to yeah, make so, dog. I don't know. I'm like trying to think of just like random connections <laughs> I can make between like the four things that are in country songs. Um, but yeah, it's sort of like where that is in the past and where it is now. I, I, I think there's some interesting details there. Uh, in the same way we talked about gatekeeping with emo rap and like, uh, you know, are we allowed to borrow a genre from a traditionally people of color music genre and then not allow people of color in when they want a part of it? And I think that that is relevant when we talked about it before and it's relevant when we talk about it now in a different genre. But if we're going to see more combination of genres overall, then we need to be accepting of allowing all people to experiment, to try to, to, to break down these self-imposed barriers. And uh, I think we'll be all the better for it. I think we'll write better fucking music for it. Not this There'll boring yeehaw tractors. bullshit. More what? tractors. More fucking tractors. My tractor Cow dogs. Bell. With little cows. With little baby cows. <laughs> so, thank you for checking out this episode of the Emo Social Club Podcast. If you see us at a bar, we accept beverages from you. Uh, we thank you for your continued patronage of our emo sadness. Uh, yes. Yeah. Thank you for uh, listening to us. And from all of us here at the Emo Social Club Podcast, I'm Brian. I'm Lizzie. <laughs> and goodbye. <laughs> Why are we like this? I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs>